What should I bring? A visit to the McNeil River State Game Sanctuary is a lot like a camping trip to a remote and wild Alaskan location, with a few exceptions. First, remember to bring your McNeil permit and a picture ID. You must provide these to staff upon arrival. This is very important. Without them, you will not be able to leave the camp area and will have to leave the sanctuary and return to Homer at the first opportunity. McNeil is a remote camping experience, so you need to bring tent and camping gear. Come prepared to be fairly self-sufficient for the time you are here. Tent sites at McNeil are gravel pads and somewhat sheltered from the wind. But it can blow pretty hard on the Alaska Peninsula coast. You will need a good three or four season tent with a full coverage rain fly that can sustain 30 plus mile per hour winds in rainy conditions. You may not encounter such bad weather, but it can happen and you need to be prepared if it does. Backyard or bargain tents will not provide adequate shelter under difficult weather conditions. A substandard tent could affect your entire McNeil experience. Suitable tents and other equipment may be rented from outdoor equipment outlets in Anchorage or from outfitters in Homer, but that should be arranged well in advance of your arrival. Other camping gear should include a sleeping pad and warm sleeping bag. Temperatures can fall into the low 40s at times during the viewing season. While the weather may sometimes be quite warm, you should have layers of warm clothes, including hat and gloves. Synthetic or wool clothing that retains warmth while wet is best. Some visitors like a heavy coat for stationary viewing on cool, wet days and bring several changes of clothes, including extra socks. There are several water crossings of streams and estuaries on the way to and from bear viewing areas. While hip boots generally suffice, lightweight waist or chest waders are more reliable to keep you dry if deeper water is encountered. They are also an advantage on cold rainy days or if you are of shorter stature. Felt soles are not permitted due to the potential transfer of invasive species. It is important that boots or waders fit well as you will be wearing them most of the time you are away from camp, eight or more hours a day. Ill-fitting or leaky, boots or waders can become unbearable and make it almost impossible to walk across boggy or muddy terrain. Good hip boots or waders are essential. Full days out viewing bears in wind and rainy conditions require good rain gear, jacket and pants, ponchos, cheap plastic raincoats and umbrellas are not appropriate. In addition to inadequate rain protection, they flap in the wind and can scare bears that may be in close proximity to the group. Even good rain gear made of Gore-Tex or other breathable material may not provide adequate protection if there is a full day of sustained rain and wind in the field. Rubberized rain gear, such as that used by fishing boat crews, provides the best rain protection. And don't forget equally good rain pants, though good waders can serve that purpose as well. Remember that your personal preparation for being out in the field viewing bears also affects the other visitors in your group. If one member of the group is so uncomfortable they cannot continue, everyone will have to return to camp.
you will need to bring all personal hygiene items, including toilet paper and a towel for use in the sauna. And while you need to bring any cups, plates, and utensils you might need, the sanctuary provides cooking pots and pans, and cleaning supplies. While the sanctuary has basic first aid supplies, it is a good idea to bring a first aid kit, insect repellent, sunscreen, and sunglasses. You should have a backpack of some kind for carrying your food, extra clothes and equipment to and from bear viewing locations every day. Be prepared with some way to keep your gear dry when you are in the field. Waterproof bags are also recommended for transporting your gear to McNeil in case it is raining when you arrive. While wheelbarrows are provided, you will need to carry or move your gear up to 600 yards from the plane to camp, so pack accordingly. Even though Alaska's summer days may be long, a flashlight or headlamp and batteries can come in handy for use in your tent and during hours of darkness during parts of the viewing season. There are six propane stove burners for cooking in the cook cabin. Do not bring personal stoves or fuel. Their use in the cook cabin presents a safety hazard for you and other visitors using the area. This will also save you weight and logistical problems for air travel to Alaska and on your float plane trip to McNeil. You do not need to bring any kind of chairs. The sanctuary provides lightweight, Crazy Creek type chairs for use in the field and folding chairs for bear viewing at McNeil Falls or use in camp. And there are tables and benches in the cook cabin. By not bringing chairs, you can save weight for your flow plane trip. Water for drinking and cooking at McNeil is obtained from a freshwater creek a short distance from the camp. It must be filtered or treated prior to drinking. Filtration pumps, gravity feed filters, Ultraviolet steripens or chemical treatment are all acceptable means of purification. In order to conserve propane and for the sanctuary to be able to continue providing it, boiling of drinking water for purification is not allowed. Bringing bottled water is discouraged. It weighs a lot on your flight to McNeil and it creates a lot of waste which must be flown back. You will also need two one liter water bottles for use in the field each day. you will need to bring sufficient food for your entire stay. It is recommended to bring one to two days of extra food in case your return flight to Homer is delayed by weather. Bring high energy food and snacks for long days in the field viewing bears. Here are a few things to keep in mind when planning and packing food. Visitors bring a wide variety of items based on their personal tastes and abilities. From freeze dried backpacking meals to full-on steak dinners and fresh vegetables. It is really up to you, but keep in mind the weight limits for your flight to McNeil. Transporters generally have a weight limit per passenger and gear. There will be extra charges and possible delays for any overages. Pack smart, limiting gear to that you will likely need, reducing packaging, and reducing heavy items such as canned goods and bottled drinks. There is no refrigeration at the McNeil camp. Plan on non-refrigerated items or bring a cooler and ice for items that need to be kept cold. You are generally out bear viewing in the field from 10 a.m. through 8 p.m. Bring packable lunch items and snacks for eating out in the field. You cannot cook while out in the field, but there is time each morning to prepare something for the day's outing. A small thermos to carry a hot drink or soup 
goes a long way on a cold, wet day in the field. It is imperative that bears do not associate the group with food items. All food scraps, trash, crumbs, etc. need to be kept and returned from the field. Choose daily lunch items accordingly, favoring items that are not messy and are easily contained. Also, consider meal preparation time at the end of a long day in the field. Ziploc baggies are a good item to bring for field lunches, as well as for carrying used toilet paper or other trash back to camp. While some sport fishing from the spit may be allowed, the opportunity to do so is limited by staff due to number of bears in the area. Additionally, you will likely have little time for fishing if you are participating in full bear viewing days. If you plan to fish, you will need your own equipment and a valid Alaska sport fishing license. If allowed to fish, you are allowed to retain only one fish for consumption that day in order to avoid conditioning bears to fish smells in camp. Once caught, the fish must be cleaned immediately, all entrails dumped back into the water, and the fish returned to camp in a sealed container or plastic bag. The McNeil staff guides are well trained, experienced, and equipped to keep you safe in the field. No one has ever been injured by a bear at McNeil. It is not necessary to bring firearms or bear spray. Not only are they unnecessary and would present safety risks to the rest of the group in the field, they also present logistical problems for air transport and represent additional weight better allocated elsewhere. McNeil staff have bear spray and air horns available for visitors wanting to take a beach walk. And don't forget your binoculars, camera gear, and all the digital storage or film you may need. No electricity is available at the sanctuary, so be sure to bring sufficient batteries for the duration of your stay. There is no cell phone or internet coverage at McNeil. If you will require communications during your visit, you will need to bring your own personal satellite phone or other satellite communication device.